Hello, everyone, and welcome to our fourth Power Hour of 2022. For those who don't know me, my name is Tom Gray. I'm the community lead here at Glide. We are very excited to have you with us looking at those lists of attendees. It's wonderful to see so many familiar names and to see some new names joining for the first time. A big, warm welcome from all of the Glide team. In today's Power Hour, we'll be showing you how you can level up your business operations using Glide. Today's session aims to showcase how Glide can help individuals become their company's superstar and how you can turbocharge your existing operations. We'll be giving you some insights on how Glide can help you automate many of your business processes and workflows. Uh, we'll be showing you how Glide helps teams to level up and improve communication and performance. And we'll also be showcasing Glide's flexibility and power within the custom solutions that you and your team can build without needing any design or coding skills to do so. I'm very delighted to welcome uh, as my co-host today, the talented Mr. Jesus Vargas. Hey, how's it? Hey, Jesus, how are you? <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Happy, very excited to be here. Thanks for having me today. Pleasure. If you, if you haven't met Jesus, uh, he is the founder of Low Code Agency. His company provides powerful glide solutions to help businesses of all sizes level up. Everything from small local businesses right the way through to Fortune 500 companies. Low Code Agency has an unrivaled portfolio of glide projects and customer success stories, all of which we'll be delving in a moment. Hey Zeus, I am stoked that you're here. Are you feeling excited? Are you feeling good? Yes, very much. As I was saying, you've done some incredible things with Glide for a, a wide spectrum of use cases for operations. And, and I'd love it if you could share with us some of the projects that you've built and, and some of the customers that you work with. Yeah, absolutely. I have a few good examples that I can share here today. So let's bring this up. Cool. So my presentation skills are not as good as yours. So my deck's a little funky, but that doesn't matter. But the important thing is that we can showcase uh, like two or three customer stories about uh, how businesses are using Glide in their operations, right? So the first customer story that I want to showcase is this logistics company. They uh, do freight transportation, and they're very focused on products that have batteries. In uh, the transportation industry, transportation of batteries is very regulated. And of course, as we all know, like more and more items today have batteries for required batteries. And then they have to go through this very unique process of figuring out what type of batteries each product is using in order to generate some uh, labels and organize the, the transport and the shipment of those products. So this company, what they were using before is or was a spreadsheet. And then based on the battery weight, you can see here that I have a screenshot of an Excel file, the battery weight, the watt hours, uh, the amount of lithium that each product or battery contained. Then they had to do a formula that calculated how many items, how many batteries, what type of battery. So it was very complex. And then they had to build multiple Excel files. They just couldn't keep track of that process. Each person in the company had a different way of generating those labels, and there was just no visibility on how the process worked in the company, right? So obviously, and we'll get into that later, but the first thing that we did is we uh, did a full scope, full understand their process, because when we're building for operations, it's very important to understand how a business works in terms of their operations. Uh, so we built a, a, a wireframe that you can see the screenshot here, and then uh, we end up building this very custom app where we have a list of products, a list of shipments, and actually there's a learning module because people that work in the industry have to get certificated. So this platform will provide that certification for them. So as you can see, uh, we generated this very unique setup where the super admin, the app owner can upload products uh, either one by one or through uh, uploading a CSV file and then select products that they want to add to their shipment, in this case, 
this customer selected the Pixel XL and then some other product. And then on the back end, we're calculating which batteries are contained, how many grams of lithium. And based on that, as you can see on the right side of my screen, we're generating a PDF file. So at the end, when the shipment is ready and you click a button, it generates a PDF file that gets brought back into Glide and it gets also, it, it also gets sent to the user's email address uh, with this table, like how many lithium batteries, uh, lithium cells, some information, and it's generating some QR codes that they are printing and printing as a label and putting on the container box, whatever. You can see it's a very small screenshot down here, but we have the, the scenario, we have an automation that something happens in Glide and then we generate these PDF files and then bring them back to Glide. I actually have the app here. Uh, so this is like the back end. You can see the Glide editor itself. If I actually do a quick walkthrough, we have actually a landing page, right? And this is just placeholder information, but this is like a simple landing page. It's public. And then users go through the onboarding process of creating the profile, creating their organization. Then we have like a bunch of introduction screens uh, with my ugly face so far in the videos. And then we have like the products and the shipments, the manufacturers, like everything in the app. Of course, as usual, in some cases we're using light tables as a backend. In this case, we're using Google Sheet because they were used to work on a spreadsheet, right? So they still have access to that. Now the advantage is that it's only one person who has access to the spreadsheet uh, and nobody touches that. They can all do what they want in the app uh, generate their products, their shipments, see their labels, et cetera. But at the end, this is the front end and the back end has an organized way of having the, the, the data, right? So yeah, that's the, the first example that I can show you like transportation of batteries, something very niche, very unique, but it's something that is saving them a lot of time and, and eventually money. Amazing, amazing. And, and why, was, why was Glide your go-to tool for this project? I think one of the main reasons was it's easy to use, right? It's easy to use for their employees or for the people, eventually they'll have manufacturers and, and people outside of their organization you're, uh, using the app, but it's just simple to use. You, they don't have to teach people how to use Glide. They just log in and as you saw on that like onboarding flow, create your profile, create your organization, create your first shipment, right? So it's very easy. It's Glide is a quality product, so it's not buggy, like Glide works. And we've seen and we've taken over projects that people or businesses have created something somewhere else, different tech stack, different platform, and it's just buggy and it's slow. Like Glide is just clean, it's quality, and there are new features coming up all the time that we always end up using in the app. So like the QR code generation is a function of Glide itself, right? We're generating a file, but the QR codes, you just have a column on, on Glide that Glide generates the QR codes, right? So it's easy to use for them and it's a quick way of generating a very valuable product for them quickly and way less expensive than traditional development. I wanna show you the next one. Um, and then I add this uh, screen here. So as you can see, most of the apps that I'll show you have a lot of automations. In this case, Glide and Make, they work pretty well together. And make we at local we are a partner of Make as well, formerly called Integramet. They have thousands of apps that you can connect to Glide, right? So if you're thinking you can generate something in Glide, like in this app that I've just showed, you can generate something in Glide. In this case, a shipment, and then send the data over to DocuSign to generate a PDF. And you can do the same the other way around. So if something's happening, let's say in your company you use. SAP or whatever type of software, you can generate something, an action that happens on that software, on that product, and then get the data back into Glide. So Glide is great uh, for automations. And then that gets me to this second customer story, uh, which is this inventory management product. So this is a fairly large organization. They have over hundred employees. And something that happens is that they hire someone and then they'll give that person access to different things, software licenses, FOBs, cars, computers, et cetera, right? And then when someone was leaving the company or they fired someone, it was just super complicated, super messy to keep track of what that person had, who that person had to, let's say, give back to the organization. Like different departments had different things, different ways of assigning things. So I would just saw their, their emails and there was just dozens and dozens of emails tracking 
who had what, like who had the file, who had the key, who had access to a uh, password or something. So the first thing that we do as usual is do the scope, right? So we have the project outline, the different types of users, what they see, what they do. And then uh, the next step is the wireframe. In our process at Locode, we wireframe all the projects. And you can see like we have the super admin dashboard, the manager ad dashboard, they all have different screens, different actions. So we define the roles. This is again, very custom in operations. Each company has like, different types of departments, different ways of doing things, right? Uh, and the beauty with Glide is that we can very easily, as long as we understand the company ways of operation, ways of they work, uh, we, can, we can generate those roles in Glide. So as you can see, I'll show you quickly here on the database, we have here the, the role column, right? So we have the super admin, the home department admin, manager, employee. So this app has four different roles. It's very custom for them. Um, and then based on the user's role, they can do edit, delete different things. They have access to different things. A pretty important setup about this app is that the manager has to approve something before it gets uh, given to the employee, right? So we have that tiered access of how the app works, I have a little video here. So again, in this case, we have, uh, what, what did they end up with? A platform that allows the organization to manage 130 plus employees with contractors built in a very simple way um, with Glide, very clean interface there. Like they came from spreadsheets and emails. When they see this, it's just clean. It's a nice interface. They can see who has what with a couple of clicks, right? And then of course, in this app, we have a bunch of email automation. So you can assign someone a product and then everybody gets email. So the manager gets an email, like go into this link, click this button, approve that assignment or whatever, right? So you can keep track and I'll stop the video and actually show you the app. In this case, we have our table of employees, our table of inventory of items, right? So I can add a new item. Let's say that I buy a new software like Glide, right? So I would have to come here, uh, some assets, some IDs that they use to keep track of things, the logo. I have to link this asset to a department, right? So that the manager has access to that and knows what's there, right? And then, so I have a list of departments and I have a list of approvals. In this case, this user doesn't have any approvals, but then maybe as a manager, I can accept or deny a request. So maybe uh, some user didn't need access to log in, or I don't want to give someone a laptop. So it's a very custom build for this client. And then they end up with a very streamlined way of doing things. Something that they needed was something built fast, right? So we build this app, the whole process took like three to four weeks. The actual build, the client build was a couple of weeks. So they end up with something very custom because this is not something like an off the shelf product that they could buy. They tried a few, they didn't like them they end up with something super custom for them. Oh, amazing. And for, um, just, to, just to summarize, what, what would you say are the main benefits of building this kind of a tool in, in Glide? So in this case, what they were looking for was speed. So they wanted like their go-to market, go-to internal market was ASAP, right? So that's something that we see a lot of value in Glide. Uh, when we build projects in, diff in a different tech stack, the timelines are just, not as fast as Glide. So speed was a huge uh, point for them. The design, as you can see, it's clean, it's easy to use, it's wide, it's simple, and obviously cost. This organization is a nonprofit uh, up in New York, and then cost was very important for them. They had a low budget for this. So when they were comparing Glide and low code with other options, this was just what made a lot of sense for them. So, so something that we do, and in this case, it was important, uh, we have like a scoping template where we have a discovery call to the client and understand how they work. With operations, I think it's very important that businesses, if you're your oper like an operations manager in a company, you run a company, that you have a very clear idea of what you need, like the current process. And that's why we map, like in this case, I have a user flow here. We map all of the, the user flow, how data moves through, through your organization, through your process, in order to replicate the same in Glide and then we can start automating and building additional things. Third one I'll show is um, this one called 12.5. 12.5, if you, on the, 
on Glide's website on customer stories, I think we have 12.5 as, as a story there. Um, so I'll give a little bit more context. 12.5 is a financial institution that lends money to mid-sized businesses that for whatever reason don't go to the bank or a traditional uh, lending platform, let's say. So they had a very custom process. As you can see, they're in the financial industry, but they're not a bank, they're, they're a unique type of business, let's say. And currently they, they loan money to their clients constantly, like once a week, once like two or three times, two or three or four times per month, right? So it's very, like the process is very fast and ideally it has to be very efficient. Like clients, let's say they have a, a, an e-commerce client, so the client needs money to pay for goods ASAP in order to get it for Thanksgiving, right? So the process was not the best. Uh, so the original process was, 12.5 has a PDF file. They send the PDF file to the client via email, right? Then the client ideally filled out the whole PDF. In many cases, they didn't. They left some fields empty. Um, they sent it to their account manager. The account manager came back to the client and was like, hey, I need additional documentation in order to loan you the money. So the client sends a few documents. They didn't send the whole list. So it was just email back and forth, back and forth taking so much time and at the end providing a just not a good experience for their clients, right? The goal was to loan money fast or deny the loan, but do it quickly, right? So we have like all these steps at the end, the customer ends up being angry or unsatisfied, right? Um, something very important about um, 205, about this organization is that they use Asana for everything. So all of their operations live in Asana, right? They couldn't create a, a unique flow for their clients. Asana is their internal tool and all their operations, sales, everything happens in Asana. So they were not only looking for a custom solution for this project, but also they were looking for something that integrated extremely well with Asana because at the end they need everything back in Asana. So of course they looked into several um, off the shelf platforms in their industry and there's nothing that you can customize to this level, right? So what we ended up doing is a originally a Glide app and now a Glide page that you, when users log in, they can see their previous loan amount. So the first thing that you know is your loan balance, right? And then when you click, they, what they're creating is these borrowing base certificates. So the clients can click the new borrowing base certificate button and then they have to fill a form. Now, a very important part about this flow is that every client is unique and some clients can use, let's say their inventory to get more money, loan, right? So when the admin, when 12.5 is creating a client in Glide, they select if the client has the inventory or not, or if the client has uh, a different kind of asset or not. And based on all of those variables, we're generating this form and the, the, the number, the end number based on the input of the client changes. So we can already, without having any interaction between the client and the organization, we can already validate if they can uh, get a loan for $100,000. Maybe they can't because they don't have that amount of inventory or something. So we're already saving a lot of time for the organization because the client can only fill the form according to what they are allowed to from the, let's say from the back end, from the admin side, right? Another right. important thing is that clients get prompted to upload the appropriate documents. So if they can get a loan against their inventory, we have a field that is required for them to upload a PDF document that has uh, something related to their inventory or something. So this just saves so much time and provides a clean interface and a clean experience for the client because they sit down, fill in the form, if they haven't completed the form or if they didn't fill it correctly, they can submit it, right? So before we had one, two, three, four, five steps of emails, today, no email, right? Client has to do their thing, they want money, they have to fill the form. Fantastic. And as a, as a internal user, so tell five, they can see all of the previous borrowing based certificates, right? There are different statuses, there's submission date, who submitted what, so you can filter by clients. Um, another pretty cool thing is that when the document or the process in Glide is approved, uh, we're sending, we're generating a PDF, sending it to sign request, sending it to the client, 
so that uh, someone on the end signs the document. As soon as that's signed, we bring it back to Glide, right? So the whole process that previously was clunky emails, someone had to create a PDF, someone had to uh, generate a, a signature flow, everything is handled by Glide itself. Of course, this is something that we build with them over a longer period of time, right? It's something very custom, very complex, very unique for them. And then what they want, what they love, is that when the document is signed, we feed everything back to Asana. Not only the documentation that the client provide, the, the new borrowing-based certificate, but also all of these numbers that 12.5 is using to uh, whatever, generate trends reports, et cetera. So you can see that there are a lot of uh, values here, a lot of attributes for each submission. So at the end, the client also can see their own uh, submissions, see the status, see the documents. So they just have one place when they're getting money, they just have one place with 12.5 that they don't get with any other uh, company that they might get a loan from. So this is just a very nice and clean client portal for them. They can keep track of all of their loans if they've been approved or not. And of course, again, we're sending a lot of email notifications and a lot of third-party integrations in order to achieve this very clean flow. This has just saved them so much time, especially for the account managers. No more emails, which is their goal, right? So. When the client does something, they get notified in Slack, in Asana, and then they take over uh, knowing that everything is there, right? So it was a, a very interesting project as well that they have been iterating and, and upgrading and changing and moving things along uh, since they started working with Glide. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. And, and why did you recommend using Glide for this project? Why not another tool? In this case, the flexibility that Glide provided in order to build something very custom for their needs. So I said, the integration with Asana was a very big deal. And we figured out a way using Zapier and uh, Meg.com to do that integration. Another important thing is that previously, it was only the account manager who had visibility about the process for each of their clients. They have a few account managers. So the more they grew, the less visibility the company had about what they were working with, who what they were working with, and generating reports. So we like this portal allows everybody that has the right role in 12.5 to see what they're supposed to see. Like we have another section in the app that's not here uh, that they can generate reports, see some charts, see some graphics. And again, we're just using the the, the components, the elements that Cloud provides in order to present that data in a prettier, nicer, easier to read way. Um, so that was another important uh, part of doing this in life. I'm really fascinated by um, what you're doing at Low Code. And I was, I was keen to explore why, why individuals choose Low Code Agency and what's been the secret for your fast growing pool of happy customers. <laughs> Our secret has been building in Glide. Glide. Glide is really great because with Glide, when we are when clients are comparing us and Glide with a uh, different tech stack or different, uh, let's say, software providers or agencies, like we're just extremely fast and extremely price competitive, right? Uh, I, I would say that we know Glide very well. We have a bunch of Glide experts on the call, but I would say like we know Glide very well. We've done 269 projects in Glide. Just this year, we're going to make 80 something projects in Glide. So we really know the platform. We know it better than any other platform that we use. Um, so right from the discovery call, we can figure out if Glide is the right fit for the project or not, right? So when we build something in Glide, we know it's a perfect fit. We are extremely, another reason would be that we are extremely process oriented. So we have a very clear process and we make it as productized as possible. So we have a discovery call, we understand their needs, scope the project, then we wireframe the project, then we have the actual build, then QA a launch. So that's something uh, that we have figured out is a very good way to have a very good output when the client is very happy because we have a lot of uh, interaction with them and their stakeholders if they're more than one in order to fully understand their operations, right? When you're working with a company that has a current process, it's different that, that, than building an MVP. In an MVP, maybe there's a lot of input from the developer, freelancer, agency. In this case, it's just about figuring out how they do things in order to reproduce that in Glide 
and then start automating and enhancing the, the, the flow and the experience. I would also mention uh, integrations. I think I already covered that over here uh, with Glide and Make, but I think that Glide is very powerful and something that we use almost, or actually not almost, in every single project that we build in Glide is we use Make, right? And we use Make to connect to different things. Either if it's just for sending out an email notification or sending a text or something, or doing more robust integrations. Uh, we recently did um, an integration with uh, Azure, with Microsoft Azure, MySQL, and MySQL database. Uh, and then we've done like so many things. When you work with a with a business, a working business that has an operation, they are already using something, right? And you don't want the information in Glide or the Glide app to be siloed into just Glide, right? So by leveraging Make and Zapier and, and these automation tools, we can connect that app to the rest of the of the of the back end of the software that they use in order to have more, more visibility. Because one thing is cleaning up the process, creating the right user roles, and having each type of user do like create, see, edit, delete, whatever the what they're supposed to. But at the same time, is creating that uh, form that 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 data in order to connect mm -hmm. that to different software. So. You have an e-commerce store, so something happens in Shopify, then we bring it to Glide, and then something happens in Glide, and then we send it to QuickBooks, right? So the integration part is extremely important, um, and that's something that that we have doubled down on in the last few months, year, and something, um, and that's something that also our clients see that is something very valuable for them. Mm. Yeah, I wanted to ask about the common issues you come against in the process and, and how you go about solving them. Something that in operations that we are very strict on, we are very uh, obsessed about, is that it's important that our client, that the company that wants to use Glide, understands very well their process. Because it's not unusual that we'll have a discovery call with someone that says, my operation, like this is how we work, I think, and I think that HR does this, and I think that the inventory department manages inventory this way and and that's very complicated because at the end as a software development agency we end up being consultants but we're not experts in in, in everything right in every type of industry so it's very important that uh when someone is thinking about building an app or hiring someone like us or any of the other cloud experts to build an app it's something it's important that you know how your flow works in a lot of cases i tell uh our clients or leads or just friends, like map your user flow, fully understand your process, see who the stakeholders are, how the data moves through, through your organization. And then that's when you can convert that to an app because there's no kind of local tools like Live allows us to build something fast and efficiently and quickly, as long as the flow is the right one, right? So that's a common issue that we sometimes see, like get a lot of clarity in that. Probably I would say that's the, the main issue, especially yeah. in operations. Yeah, um, no, that's that's very sound advice, and and um, I had a question on that actually. Is is for individuals just joining Glide, um, and and uh, for newbies just getting started? What what advice would you give them? Uh, things to think about. What are the what are the things you wish you knew when you first started with Glide? I think that I see a lot of apps that people have started, and then they come to us because they need to get it to the next step, and it's usually the database structure is not built the right way. And that's something very normal that probably we all did, at least in my case, I, I didn't do the database structure right in my first projects, right? So when you understand the, the relational database model that Glide uses and start thinking of disaggregating things and putting different things in different tables. So as an example, we have for tables here, uh, like the users table is a table by itself. And then we have the at the categories and the home departments and the assets itself, right? So it's very usual that when people are coming from a spreadsheet into Glide, everything is on the same table. Like you have one Excel file, one Glide, one Google Sheet file, one tab, everybody's in there, everything's in there. 200 plus columns, names and emails and the asset name and the asset ID, right? In this case with Glide, I think it's better to start disaggregating and putting things in different tables and then linking them together through relations in Glide. 
Mm. So I think that's something very important when you start mapping your user flow, you start thinking, oh, when I grow, maybe later on, uh, like why do we have home departments as its own tab? Because later on, we don't have, we don't wanna have them, the home departments on the users table. Maybe later on departments change, right? You already have a table, you can delete a row at a row and that gives you scalability. And that's something that all businesses need. And in order to build things right from the beginning, that's something that they should spend some time on. My suggestion would be looking to the templates, even in Glide, like linking here the plus button, you have some sample tabs and you see that when you create a sample tab on the Glide uh, builder, it'll create a few tables on the back end. So see that format, see how Glide thinks, uh, see how the templates are built, and then they'll give you a good segue into how to build your, your own solution. Jesus, thank you for sharing some of those incredible insights, lots of amazing uh, work there. Please, if you haven't already, go and check out Jesus's company website. It's lowcode.agency. Uh, there you'll find some more information about uh, how they can help your business level up with Glide, uh, whether you're wanting just a consultation or to have your project built out end to end. Um, we're shortly going to be uh, joined by our special guest. Uh, but if you do have a question for Jesus about anything that we covered, uh, please do add it into the uh, Q&A tab. Jesus, I think you have access, so you might be able to jump on a few of those. Um, Jesus and I will also be hanging out in uh, the community for our first extended Power Hour Q&A after the session. So more on that shortly. I'm very delighted to welcome our special guest today, Mr. Mitch Thorpe. Uh, the talented Mitch has become an ambassador for Glide and leads Glide for operations. Here he is. Um, this is a group. Hey, John. Hey, Mitch. Good to see you. Um, I was just telling them about um, Glide for operations. Uh, it's, a it's a group within the community where you can learn and connect with others who are wanting to also turbocharge uh, their company operations. Mitch has been with us, I think, for, for over a year now. Yeah, yeah, just over a year now. Just over a year now. Um, and has played an incredibly pivotal role and, and becoming his company's superstar by using Glide to, to level up their operations. Um, very delighted to have him have him with us. Welcome, Mitch. How are you doing today? Yeah, very good, very good. So I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, well, thank you for joining. Mitch, I'd, I'd love to learn more about your experience as well. We had lots of great things there from, from Jesus, but I'd love to learn more about your experience working in operations um, before you found Glide. What were the problems that you were facing in your company? All right. So before I found, or we found Glide and started working in the way that we are now. Um, so I started out as a control room manager for a uh, predominantly security company at that point. So we were managing around a thousand security guards. Um, and then I got promoted to one of the operations managers within that. And then we started managing different types of roles. So from security guards to riders to cleaners. So our whole uh, scope kind of like started to grow and change. Um, and during this period, it was more of uh, we were putting out fires every day. So every day was just you knew when you went to work that there was going to be a an issue to deal with. And all of our processes were manual and the work that we did was was incredibly um it was just difficult because every situation that would come up we would have to basically solve it again and again and again without having a proper process to solve it um yeah so i, I could just say our lives were con continuously firefighting and just difficult every day and very long days because you didn't have any way of solving these issues and, and so why Glide? I believe we realized um, eventually after torturing ourselves for a very long time that uh, all of our data was everywhere. So we had no like one true source of information. So biggest problem, one of the biggest problems we had is that when you have an employee base of so many people, 1000 plus, and you don't actually know who you're employing, um, you don't know who you're scheduling then, then you don't know if you have the correct amount of people to provide to the number of clients that you have. So we started pulling everything together into a central place, which we started with as a Google Sheets, or Google Sheets, and we're pulling everything in there. Um, 
problem is that everyone can still edit. I know you can restrict columns, but once you're dealing with a team of around 30 to 50 and you're trying to keep up to date of restricting columns, it gets a bit difficult. So we started looking for ways that people didn't have access to the data directly, but instead viewed it only what they needed. So we, this is when we came across Glide just over a year ago. Um, and that managed to give us the, the control, you know, and actually start to like put together a correct process where people would only see what they needed to for a specific action. So this started to improve our integrity of our data. We had one true source of information and we could begin working better as a team collectively. Amazing. Yeah, I mean, that leads on to my question about what, what was life like once you'd, you'd, you'd built a pro the project out in Glide? So things started to get a lot calmer. People actually started to know what to do and when to do it. Um, especially like if I take into like um, the administrative side of managing all of these people, you, you knew when you had to onboard someone, when somebody was active, when you had to schedule someone, when somebody was offboarding, when they were, we have all these different statuses that once they hit a status, there's certain actions that somebody is basically told complete these actions and then they move to the next step. So you never like, stuck wondering about what to do. Um, another thing that we had issues with was uh, ma managing the attendance of these thousand people. So this is actually where Glide was our first, um, or the first thing that we used in Glide to sort out was an attendance app for the thousand people. And we practically automated the entire payroll process for the thousand plus people that they basically do their own attendance. It goes in, it calculates and we just have to download a CSV and upload it to the bank. I asked Jesus earlier, uh, what just before you joined, what what advice recommendations would you give to people just starting with Glide? The biggest, like, you can't do any good work with all of your information in different places. So I would say first, before you start putting something together on Glide, is start to put all your information together. Start to because you could have multiple different sheets, but with the same information or slightly different different variations and you end up just killing everyone because nobody actually knows where to look because there's too many places. So I would say first, just start consolidating all of your information, uh, removing anything that's redundant. And then once you have that in place, start removing people from your information and then start on your Glide app or Glide page and give them the finished product to work on so that your data just stays true. Mitch, that's superb. Yes. And it's, yeah, very good advice. Um, Mitch, that's superb and um, it's really great to have you and thank you very much for sharing. Jesus referenced it earlier um, as we're edging our way now to uh, breaking this all open um, further in the community, uh, which we're very excited for. Templates. Uh, templates are a great way for you to fast track a project. Um, for those of you who, again, totally new to Glide and you're looking for ways to learn the true magic of what's possible, uh, do head, head over to the template store found on our website. From there, uh, you can get started with templates for operations and explore dozens of other powerful tools um, that you can use to help streamline and automate your business. If you're getting to grips with building with Glide and need some assistance, there's a steady growing collection of step-by-step -step articles and videos over in our Glide docs and in our very new uh, School of Glide curated by our talented uh, Mr. Jack Vaughan. Where can you find this? If you head over to our website, glideapps.com, and you click documentation or video guides from the navigation menu, uh, you can get started from there. And for our new School of Glide, uh, which I'd certainly recommend checking out, please head to uh, learn.glideapps.com. You can also hire... Uh, and connect with talented individuals like Mr. Jesus and his team to help you with any Glide projects. Uh, you can also hire one of our experts. All of our experts are certified, independent, professional Glide developers who can help you fast track a project and help you overcome any hurdles you're facing. They're an incredibly friendly bunch. Um, they can also help you uh, build out end-to-end -end projects if that's something that you're looking to do. Uh, so do draw on them if you need. Uh, you can find our directory of experts on our website. You can also connect with them in the community, uh, in our wonderful community. Uh, if you've 
not already signed up, come and join the fun and be a part of the most supportive and responsive community on the web. Um, it's Q&A time, uh, as I mentioned. If you uh, have a question that hasn't yet been answered um, by uh, Jesus um, in the Q&A, uh, if there's things that we've missed that you feel would be a huge benefit to other gliders, let's keep the conversation going. Please scan this QR code here on the screen and join our discussion uh, on Glide for Operations inside the community forum. Mitch, Jesus, and I will be heading over there and we'll be dropping also some more information and resources on everything we covered today. So again, here is the QR code, the links to the community post. Uh, let's keep the conversation going. Um, I'm uh, also gonna ping this link inside the chat for those who are wanting to also do this on desktop. Thank you very much for joining. This has been absolutely um, superb. I hope that you enjoyed today's Power Hour uh, and we uh, can't wait to see you at our next Power Hour, which will be with Mr. Bob Tiso later this month. Thank you again, Jesus and Mitch, uh, for your sublime insights uh, and see you all in the community for our extended uh, Power Hour Q&A. Happy Wednesday, everybody. See you shortly.